meteorologist Wayne Hart with weather. This is Channel 32 News. Good evening. Topping our 6 o'clock report, a three-alarm fire dooms the historic theater in Louisville. Bill Francis reports what's left at the Savoy could soon be gone. Louisville firefighters spent part of this day pouring water on what remains of the Savoy Theater. The roof of the building is gone. All that's left standing are the four walls. Last night's three-alarm fire, which broke out about 11.30, also gutted two other vacant buildings in downtown Louisville's so-called porno zone. This fire was the third multiple alarm fire in downtown Louisville during the past 10 days, and all of the fires had a suspicious origin. Is the same person setting these fires? From the pattern we're getting at first blush, it would look like it, but all the information we've gathered and the way the fires travel, no, I don't think so. I think it's a separate individual. It could be vacant street people, um, something this time. Courtney says this fire started in the front of the building on the second floor. For months, the city has wanted to demolish the Savoy, turn it into a parking lot, and wait for developers to move in. Earlier this year, a preservationist toured the building, hoping someone would step in and save it. They said its Victorian architecture and its colorful history involving vaudeville and burlesque were worth preserving. But with this fire, its fate is now sealed. Uh, the building, as far as I can term it, structurally unsafe. I don't know what the intentions are about taking it down or not. The city was taking steps this afternoon to have the Savoy demolished immediately, and it could be history by the end of the week. Bill Francis, Channel 32 News. Firemen are still searching for the cause of a fire at the Neo Wood Products Company on Magnolia Avenue. The entire building had to be evacuated after the fire broke out because of the sawdust collection. Major Harold Whitten of the Louisville Fire Department says this kind of fire is not that unusual. But it is kind of a common occurrence with uh, uh, people that generate sawdust because of the industrial process. It happens occasionally, yes. However, fire officials are still investigating the blaze. The defense began presenting its side of the story today in the rape trial of five Kentucky State University students. It began with a direct attack on the credibility of the woman who says she was attacked. Harold Adams is here with the tales. Harold? Liz, the defendants have said all along that the woman had sex with them willingly, and today they put on the sixth man who says she began the evening having sex with him. A picture of the bed where the alleged rape took place was passed among the jury. The woman says she had sex only with the five defendants on the night of the incident. The defense says that's a lie. To back that up, they put on a sixth man, Alan Marshall, who says he had sex with her in the same room that night before the others came in. Now, when you say she did you, what do you mean by that? She engaged in all stuff. The defense believes that makes it likely the woman is lying about whether she willingly had sex with the other five. Assistant Prosecutor Larry Cleveland tried to shake Marshall's story. And for you, the only four players involved in this on your part is you're kissing her on the cheek. Yes, sir. That's all you ever did to make her want to have more sex. Yes, sir. There was a flurry of bench conferences to decide whether Marshall could also testify about previous sex with the woman. That's usually not allowed under Kentucky's rape shield law. But Judge William Graham decided to permit it because the woman had previously denied it to the grand jury that indicted the defendants. Uh, how many times had you had sex with her before? Once before. And how long had you known her? Well, what night was that? Thursday. The Thursday he's speaking of is the one just before the Sunday night in question. Now, it obviously has nothing to do with whether the woman cooperated with the other men, but Liz, it is the kind of information that has been known to have an effect on juries. Okay, thank you, Harold. The Indiana General Assembly is back at work today trying to come up with a budget. The legislators were called back to work on a budget Governor Bai feels he can sign. The Democratic House Speaker is presiding over today's session, and the Democrats are hoping the special meeting will only last two days. However, Republicans are not sure the funding issues can be worked out that quickly. And speaking of Indiana, a lot of Hoosiers are crossing the border this week to get their last chance at a million dollars. The deadline for the chance to win the Kentucky Lottery's biggest prize is noon tomorrow. And Gary Collins joins us now with a look at the rush. Liz, when the lottery first got started a little under a month ago, there were 205 triple derby tickets worth $5,000 apiece. Now, as of this morning, there were 100 of them still out there yet to be bought. And that's one of the reasons for the latest rush to get rich quick. 
If you want to find out just how serious people can be about the lottery, the place to go is the Kentucky Souvenir Shop in Milton, just across the river from Madison, Indiana. More tickets have been sold here than anywhere else in the state, and this week is proof of why. Six. You want three more tickets? Yes, All right. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Ticket buyers are well aware that they have until noon Wednesday to get in on the chance for a million dollars at the Kentucky Derby. Now you can't blame everybody. I'd be, you know, on Wednesday, you know, they all go in for the drawing, so everybody's trying to hit it. Do you think you have one here? Sure. Absolutely. And a lot of people seem to believe this is the place to get a five grand ticket. Of course, this is a souvenir shop. There are a lot of things to buy here. Sir, would you like to buy a puppy dog? Or a, maybe a lollipop? I or don't. Fingernail clipper? Don't really think so. You're here for lottery tickets. And cigarettes. Robert Lamb of Jeffersonville, Indiana, has spent at least $200 on lottery tickets. I wouldn't say I come out ahead, but I... It depends on how many winners I got on this. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to win, but if I win, everybody in town here is going to know it. Don't hear me. <laughs> I'll come in by a ticket. Did you win? Why no? <laughs> uh, even though the deadline to get in on the million dollar dream stakes is tomorrow, anyone who gets a triple derby ticket in the future will be able to claim their $5,000 prize. And there's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Thank you, Gary. Well, Marcy Ford is having open-heart surgery in London today. The little four-year-old Breckenridge County girl went to England a month ago to have a heart-lung transplant. However, her condition has gotten worse, and doctors have had to do at least two emergency operations since she arrived to help stabilize her. The Fords plan to return to their home in Kentucky in the next two months. They want to let little Marcy recuperate before trying the transplant. Well, there is one Derby Festival event which can help anyone get in shape, and it's going on right now at Holy Rosemary Rosary Academy. It's called the Ramble for the Roses, and tonight on Health Beat, medical reporter Carolyn C. is standing by live at the Derby Festival event. Carolyn? Liz, we've all heard of the Run for the Roses. Well, this is the Ramble for the Roses. It's a five-mile walk that just started at Holy Rosary Academy. We have a tape showing you the crowd as they left the school. As you can see in this tape, there are more than 5,000 people walking, more people than were in the mini-marathon. And with me is the principal of the school, Beverly McAuliffe. Now, Beverly, you have to be pleased with the turnout. We're thrilled. We're, it's just, we anticipated 4,000, but 5,000 plus is just fantastic. How did you all get the idea for this Derby Festival event? Well, we had a walk one year, and then we wanted to uh, raise the students awareness of their community especially the south end community and we felt like this would be a wonderful way to tie in community events with our school and help the raise the students awareness of the community and the community's awareness of holy rosary and it's worked thank you so much and liz as we said there were five thousand people there were school children but there were also mothers with small children in strollers and we had some residents of area nursing homes taking part in the walk it shows just how popular fitness walking is becoming. Back to you. It's something for everybody. Right, Thank you, Carolyn. Well, coming up next, Reed Yaden takes us for a spin with the Red Barons, and our Derby Festival coverage continues with the annual Run for the Rosé. Stay tuned. You're watching Channel 32 News. Judge Best TV News broadcast in the state of Kentucky at the Associated Press Broadcast Competition. More news coming up. educated shopper is the one that could appreciate the philosophy of Byron Nissan. See, I believe customers owe it to themselves to shop. If they don't care about savings, if they don't care about service, if they don't care about treatment, that's fine. But if those things are important to a customer, and we believe that they are, then the customer owes it to themselves to shop Byron Nissan. You can feel it begin Oh, from the moment you come in Hi, can I help you? Well, yeah It's the style It's the grace It's the smile on every day The fun is back starting Saturday, April 29th at Churchill Downs Join us for breakfast at dawn at the Downs And don't forget our opening week post time, 1 p.m. the winning feeling I knew we were going to like this place Churchill Downs Stop! Stop! It's Super America's anniversary sale. Stop and save on Mars candy bars. Your choice, free for just 99 cents. Stop and save on Tropicana juices. 10-ounce bottles, just 49 cents. 
stock and save on 7-Up 24-Pack cans. Now at hot, hot anniversary sale prices. Hurry to Super American. These sales values won't last long. There's a magic moment that happens only in May, only in Kentucky, when generations and tradition come together and are emblazoned in a coat of roses. Once again, the Kroger florists are proud to share in the tradition. Open cockpit flying a bi-wing airplane that's not today's preferred mode of travel for most of us. Well, pilot reporter Reed Yaden takes us topside to meet some pilots who like the wind in their face. We're proud. The sound of the 450 horsepower Pratt & Whitney engine coming to life. This is a World War II vintage airplane. The steerman pulled war duty as a basic trainer, helping the military turn out the thousands of pilots it needed. Nearly 11,000 steermen were built. They were estimated to be 1,500 still around in various states of repair. After the war, the airplane earned its keep as a crop duster. These four aircraft worked nine months a year promoting Red Baron Pizza. I hope your seatbelt is buckled good and tight because now we're going to get in the front seat of the steerman and go for a ride with the Red Barons. And these guys will really throw you for a loop. Hang on. Here we go. Upside down. And all around. The Red Baron Squadron is made up of six pilots. John Bowman is one of them. I like to think that flying in the airplane puts me a lot closer to the fact that I am flying because you're sitting out there in the open and um, get to see the country from a very close viewpoint flying this airplane around at low level. The squadron flies 24 air shows a year plus hundreds of fly-ins. Over 9,000 people are lucky enough to ride with the Red Barons each year. We get a lot of interest, especially from older people that grew up around airplanes like these, and if they were in the military, they may have learned how to fly the airplane in this airplane. You can see the Red Baron Air Show starting tomorrow at 4.30 over Cox Park. Reed Yaden, topside in the Channel 32 Skycam. Makes me dizzy just watching it. Well, the great steamboat race is less than 24 hours away now, and the Bell of Louisville's competitor is making its way here. The Delta Queen passed through Evansville yesterday, and traveling 8 to 12 miles an hour means it should arrive in our city about noon tomorrow. Then, of course, the race for the Golden Antlers begins at 5 o'clock, and we'll bring you live coverage of the entire race right here on 32 WLKY. It was a cloudy, windy, downright cold morning for the annual run for the Rosé, but that didn't deter the 125 participants in the wine run. Sandra Hughes has the story. <laughs> They represent some of the quickest and most agile of Louisville's eateries. Their goal in Run for the Rosé to uncork, pour, and run like heck. The catch to keep all six wine glasses as full as possible. Two-time champ, Philip Haldenapt of Casa Versanti with some pre-race words of wisdom. Don't run against anybody in front of you or behind you. Just go with what you feel like inside. It isn't as easy as it sounds, keeping 26 ounces of wine from teetering off a tray while running a three-quarter mile obstacle course around the Jefferson County Courthouse. Some run fast and lose it. Others use the tortoise and hare approach. Either way, the finish line is waiting along with scales and measurements, a computer printout, and two winners are named. The champ for a third year. We're going to Disney World! We're going to Disney World! Both Polsnacht and female winner Kelly Davis, who waitresses at Angelo's, win a trip for two to Disney World in Florida. Davis says practice is the key to her victory. Me and the other girl that was here, we practiced together, and uh, we were hoping we'd come in first and second, but I came in first. I can't believe it. Believe it, Kelly, but what you really want is not the run for the rosé, but the run for the flush. Sandra Hughes, Channel 32 News. Wayne says there is a possibility of frost in our forecast. He'll join us live from the Pegasus Parade preview party when Channel 32 News continues.
For Kentuckiana's weather forecast anytime, call the 32 WLKY Weather Center at 585-1212. For the most comprehensive look at the weather, stay tuned. Wayne Hart's AMS Certified Forecast is coming up. Beautiful floats, and everyone is in full costume this evening because this is the first round of judging. As I mentioned, rain is in the forecast for Thursday. Now, behind me, we have the entry from Humana. It's called the Birth of Pegasus. And, of course, you have a, a flying Pegasus up top there, uh, the Greek god Poseidon in the rear. And Humana is the defending television champion from last year. They had the best-looking TV float, and they certainly got an excellent entry this year. Now, we have fireworks going off this evening. No problems there. But they will be closing portions of River Road down near the Belvedere and also portions of 4th, 6th, and 7th Street to kind of handle the crowds that are moving in there. It's going to be on the cool side if you're heading down. Temperatures in the lower 50s with a slight chance of a shower, but that will not cause any problems for the fireworks. Now let's color the weather for you. And tonight's winner, Carrie Waterbury from Fern Creek. Carrie is 10 years old. She attends Lure Elementary, and Carrie has colored us in a lot of brilliant sunshine. And yes, that will be the case tomorrow for the great steamboat race. Unfortunately, there's not much more in the way of sunshine in the rest of the forecast. But a very nice job, Carrie. We had a little sunshine today, but mighty chilly for the early part of May. We'll take you topside there and show you downtown Louisville earlier this afternoon, looking towards the south. And here are the numbers. Currently at chilly, 58 degrees out at the airport with a relative humidity at 40%. Winds are westerly at 15 miles per hour, and the pressure now on the way up. Our high temperature was 58 degrees at 6 o'clock and also at 3.30 this afternoon. Our morning low was down to 47 at 2.50. There was no rainfall today. Air quality was in the good category. The sun will set this evening at 8.35 with sunrise. What Newton say about the U.K. basketball coaching search? Fred will tell us. Plus, the highlight zone. And will the dosage index make Irish actor a derby winner? It's all next on Channel 32 Sports. From the crown jewels in thoroughbred racing to the most prestigious events in golf from the greatest spectacle in auto racing to the most celebrated cycling race in the world to get to the premier events in sports the directions are simple just of any of the derby contenders and a little luck of the Irish certainly won't hurt him in the run for the Roses. Trainer Leroy Jolly has had plenty of derby luck over the years. He's raced 11 horses in the derby, and two have come up winners. Jacinto Vasquez rode foolish pleasure to a victory in 1975. Then in 1980, Vasquez was on for the ride with the chestnut filly, Genuine Risk. Jolly isn't going to predict a win for his horse in this year's derby, but he will predict us, including the April 8th Flamingo, where he was neck and neck with the winner awe-inspiring until the final furlong. Irish actor is nine lengths out of it as they turn for home. But then he finished out of the money in his last race, the Arkansas Derby. Not exactly the type of performance that makes you want to think about the Kentucky Derby, but Jolly doesn't think the Arkansas Derby was a true indication of what this horse can do. You know, it was kind of a dry racetrack, which he didn't seem to run too well on. Didn't like it too well, but he ran well enough. Now, how big a role this Irish actor will play on Derby Day remains to be seen. But Leroy Jolly has had winning... Scott Skiles or Miami Sylvester Gray or ex-Hoosier Isaiah Thomas or Chicago's Bill Cartwright. But then the sport's redeemed by the unbelievable. The Knicks' Mark Jackson's passing. Bernard King's game-winning three-pointer that was so good, he had to sit back and enjoy it. Or King Rex Chapman's gravity-defying double pump reverse. Hey, when you're president, you never lose on your home court. Hockey shot of the week, a goalie who scores. Billy's Ron Hextall. Have you ever wondered why baseball players have the highest average salary in sports? Ask Manny Lee. Or Yvonne Calderon. But no. Nope. Working up a sweat was just their way of getting in the Kentucky Derby spirit. Well, coming up tonight at 11, why arson investigators were surprised when the Savoy Theater went up in flames last night. John Bowe will have a live report. And why are people selling part of Kentucky's history, buying bluegrass to make way for malls? Paula Tubman has that story. See you at 11. 